What is going on, YouTube? You know, we are just two weeks away from Founder 500 in Austin, Texas on September 1st and 2nd. There's over 500 B2B SaaS founders all coming together. You don't want to miss it. Ticket prices are increase every three days. I have it on an automatic accelerator every three days, and we're almost sold out. You can see there's about nine left when you go to the event bright link not about nine left and it's updating real time so check it out today uh, it's founderpath.com and then in the upper left you can hover over our product drop down and click the event stream i'll also put it in the description here of the youtube video i'd love to see you there hey folks my guest today is vidya santanam she's the co-founder of fitbots and leads growth she started the company after a 16-year career her last company being mindtree where she led strategic talent and leadership building vidya you ready to take us to the top absolutely new all right. You told me before you listened to the show. So this should be a really easy interview, right? I, I've memorized all your questions, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so you should just do the whole show. I'm just going to leave here. You just do it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> tell, tell us about Fitbots. So what is Fitbots? How, what are people paying you for? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Fitbots, uh, we are an OKRs company. We have both the SaaS product for OKRs along with the network of OKR coaches. The problem that we really solve is the big problem of misalignment, especially when teams are hybrid and CEOs are really struggling to get everybody uh, focused on outcomes. So that's where we come in. Interesting. So when you say you're a SaaS that helps teams manage their OKRs, what does that mean usually? Yeah. So so we have a product. Uh, we have an OKRs product. And along with that, we have a network of OKR certified coaches. So let's say a team wants to get spun up on OKRs. They take a subscription of our software along with the coach from our network. Yeah. So guys, this is one of those things, like it's one of the things we look at at FounderPath, the one where deciding which bootstrap founders to give capital to, if they have like a healthy business cadence, which means there's like a monthly review of OKRs. Every quarter, they're looking at last month's OKRs and projecting the next ones. We like this kind of business discipline. Uh, Vidya is building this nicely at FitBots. OKR stands for objectives and key results. Now, Vidya, there's a lot of sort of frameworks around this. People have heard of, you know, I would say some of the Older guys would be like Vern Harnish and Rockefeller Habits, this sort of a version. Traction is sort of a newer version. Just to be clear, you're not selling like a new way to do OKRs. You're selling software to empower systems that already exist to do OKRs, right? That's correct, Nathan. Um, so uh, objectives and key results, as you rightly called out, um, it's very similar to the revolution around Agile, which happened a few years ago uh, when tools like Asana and all came up. Uh, Agile was already a known concept. Um, so it's very similar to OKRs. We're not really here to um, educate the market on the framework. We are trying to help companies to adopt OKRs using our software. I love that. Okay. So what are companies paying you on average per month to use the technology? Um, so we get um, paid, uh, the annual contract value is about 6,000 ECV. So it's about $500. Okay. And are you charging based off team size or product features? What do you charge based off of? Um, we charge per, per person, per user per month. Per user, per, any product-based upselling or no matter what you, plan you're on, you get all the product functionality. Yeah. So we have three plans and uh, the plans, which are, of course, you know, the, uh, the, the more expensive ones have got uh, stronger integrations. I see. Okay. So the average company is paying 500 bucks per year though. Um, uh, 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 the average company is paying around $6,000 per year. Oh, 6,000 US dollars per year. That's right. That's right. Oh, amazing. Okay. Got it. Got it. Um, okay. Very interesting. And then put this all on a timeline for me. When did you write the first line of code for the company? Yeah. Um, so uh, we we launched and we, we started the company in 2018, me and my tech co-founder, Kashi. Uh, we launched the OKRs product in 2019. Um, and from there, we uh, in the same year, we actually realized that many teams being new to OKRs used to come over to us and say that, Hey, tell us more about OKRs and how to use it correctly. We're familiar with it, but we want to know how to use it correctly. Um, so we got certified as OKR coaches, coached about 650 plus teams, ran about 1,000 plus check-in meetings and built the product as we were close to users. Um, uh, so from there... Wait, what did you get certified through? Like certified from, from who? Um, we got certified from the OKRs training US. Uh, they're one of the global best in OKRs. Also bringing huh. the certifications into Asia Pacific. Um, so the the learning that we had, Nathan, was that not every problem in the world can be solved only with software. So you need some amount of um, hand-holding for teams as well so that they do it correctly. So that was our learning. 
Oh, what's going on there, YouTube? Good to see you guys. Now imagine this. You love watching these interviews with SaaS founders, but imagine if we took all of the valuation data out from over 2,807 interviews I've done manually. Saves you a lot of time. Well, we've done this. We've built it into the beautiful interface inside of FounderPath. Check this out. I'll show you how you can access this in a second, but you log in, you connect your Stripe account, you see your valuation real time, you can see what it changed over the past 88 days, and even set goals for valuation this year. Now, the secret valuation is there's many different ways to value a SaaS business. So the reason you're going to see three or four different valuations inside of your FounderPath dashboard, this is all free, by the way, is because depending on who's doing the buying of your SaaS company, you're going to get a different valuation. A VC is going to pay a different valuation. Private equity firm is different. If you're going to do a minority sale, that's different. And if you sell the whole business, that's a different valuation. You can see all those when I hover over here. All right, so the teal is what a VC would pay, yellow is what private equity, and red is if you sold the whole thing outright. Now, what's cool about this is this is not built off random data. Again, you guys hear these interviews on YouTube. All these data are built from real-time valuation data points founders share with us on the show. So traction, 1.2 million, seed round, 3.7 raise, they sold 22% of their business. Go in here and filter by the event. Maybe you only want to see companies that have sold the whole business. Well, here are a bunch that have been acquired, the valuation and the multiple. Maybe you're going out right now and you're raising your seed round. Well, go in here and look at all this recent seed deals that went down, what they raised, what valuation they raised at, and what percent that they sold. There's never been a larger data set of SaaS valuations than what you can get now inside of FounderPath, and we're thrilled to bring it to you. All right, we're going to go back to the YouTube video here in a second, but if you want to check this tool out, if you want to jump in and sign up, you can check it out for free to get your valuation at this link, this link, founderpath.com forward slash products forward slash valuations, or if you go to founderpath.com and hover over products, click on get your valuation here and go ahead and sign up to give it a whirl. Again, all that valuation data live right inside the platform. I hope to see you there. All right, let's jump back into the interview. Interesting. Okay, so you, you think about it in 2018, you really launched it 2019 then, right? Correct. And how did you get your first customers? Did this coaching company give you a bunch of early customers after you graduated as coaches? Yeah, so we, uh, we got our first customer through our own network. So, um, and, and from the first customer, we, we took that uh, experience and we got the second customer. The first two were really through networks. Mm -hmm. Okay, very cool. I love that. I love that flow. And now fast forward to today, how many customers are you working with? Oh, we have 50 customers. Five zero? That's correct. That's, that's wonderful. Okay, so um, how are you? That way, we talked about your first customer, what came from your own network. How are you adding new customers today? Because you rank very high on G2. You're getting a lot of word of mouth, I imagine. Yeah, that's right. Uh, our top two sources for leads are through inbound. So we write a lot of content on OKRs um, because we're also we have a lot of expertise around OKRs with the software. So that's converted into high quality content, and and we get leads through inbound. Um, and the, the second source is through referrals. Referrals could be either through our own customers or through word of mouth, um, or through reviews like on G two. So these are the okay. top two pages. Yeah. Okay, and fifty customers times five hundred bucks a month means you're doing about twenty five thousand dollars a month in revenue. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Amazing. And what were you exactly one year ago? Um, we were about close to about fourteen uh, k MRR. Okay, so last year at this time you're doing fourteen thousand a month. Yeah, a little lesser than that. We closed the year last year. We closed the year at fourteen k. So we're probably okay. doing a little lesser than. That. But more about a hundred percent than year over year growth. Have you done this all bootstrapped? Yeah, we were bootstrapped for about two years, maybe the first two years, and then um, so we really learned how to use capital efficiently. Then we raised a pre seed round in twenty twenty. Interesting. 2020 pre -C. Now, I love how you prefaced that statement. You said you learned how to be capital efficient. You must, because you know my show, you know, you know, I love it when people are bootstrapped. But tell me about this. How did you discover ways that you could spend a dollar and make two dollars, the capital efficiency? Um, so the first and foremost is, um, I think, in, in the context to how we organize the teams, um, so we had to, uh, so this was a toss up. Um, so, so it's, it's, it's very easy to keep hiring and then burning quickly. 
So we had to be very capital efficient in how many members in the team that we had to hire and how quickly can we build using the existing team. Um, we again optimized on uh, cloud spends. And then we started writing content. It did very, we, we actually didn't do Google ads at all. We didn't have the money at that point of time to spend on ads. So we just started building a lot of content led uh, lead generation as an engine and in order to get leads. So these were the three uh, tactics that we used in the early stage. And talk about contents. Like, what's a keyword you rank really high for on Google? Actually, we ran for OKRs of coaching for some reason. OKR um, coaching. Yeah, because I think it's also because of the network that we've built. Um, uh, so, so that's one of the top um, uh, keywords. The other is um, around OKRs templates. Because Interesting. Our, yeah. So we've got about 100 plus templates and that helps us rank up as well. Yeah. Now I'm seeing, you know, you're competing like Miro ranks for that. Betterworks ranks there. OKRtemplates.com ranks for that keyword as well. I mean, Atlassian's ranking here. How do you, how do you try and outrank, you know, HubSpot, Smartsheet? How do you try and outrank some of these just massive players that have raised hundreds of millions of dollars in VC? Yeah. So I would look at it as a judo move. So you don't need to necessarily be the um, strongest to actually survive. So that's how we look at it uh, from a mindset perspective. Um, so for us, it's really about uh, creating high quality content and distributing it and constantly working on our SEO, though it's a long term strategy. Um, so we, we basically do a lot of collaborative posts as well. So we work with global OKR coaches. We work with founders who have practiced OKRs, uh, do collaborative posts and then keep amplifying it on our social media as well. So these are some of the ways in which we've been. And how much has all of this marketing generated in terms of new signups last month? Um, we had about um, uh, 40, um, around 55 trials and about 15 high quality demos which came in. And how many closed new customers? We closed five. Five new customers. That's, yeah. that's a 30% close rate on demos. That's pretty good. Yeah. Very cool, Vidya. And when you did the pre-seed round, how much was that for? It was for 250K USD. 250K. And can I ask what valuation that was at? Yeah, that was at uh, two, 2 million. And did that feel fair to you at the time? Um, so uh, uh, when we were actually raising um, our pre-seed round, we, we actually wanted to use it to accelerate our growth. So at that point of time, I think if I look back, yeah, I wish you know it was more, but yeah, at that point of time, it seemed fair to us as founders. And are you are you the sole founder here? Or do you have co-founders? I have a co-founder. My co-founder is was my uh, ex colleague in the previous company that we I worked in. Oh, so great! We both knew each other from our workplace, and then he's my tech co-founder, and both of us started Fitbots together. Do you guys split 50-50 at the beginning? Were you friendly? Yeah, we're friendly, and um, we we split fifty fifty. Oh, that's very cool. Um, that's that's great. Now, the, the obviously the pre-seed investors come in two fifty on a two million round, so they buy call it around ten percent of the business. So each of you guys own like forty forty ish percent, forty five percent today. They own ten percent. Yeah, that that's great. That's accurate. That's awesome. Well, listen, we're certainly rooting for you. Are you looking for more capital now, or are you plan to bootstrap from here on out? So we are looking for more capital and looking to place it on growth. So we we find US is a very big market for OKR software. So really looking to double down on that. How much capital are you looking for? Well, like what's the smallest amount you could get today to drive growth? Yeah, we're looking for uh, 2 million. So we're looking to raise about 2 to 3 million at the moment. And how much equity do you think you have to sell for that? I think we need to part with about 20% is what I believe. Okay. So you think you could get sort of like a six, seven, a six or $8 million valuation? Yeah, correct. That's yeah, right. Interesting. Have you opened it up? Do you have a term sheet? Do you have a lead yet? Or you're just getting started? Yeah, so we just actually got started about a month ago and still looking for the lead at the moment. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, valuations are so compressed right now. I mean, look, you're doing 25,000 bucks a month in revenue. We just closed a $145 million fund this morning uh, for bootstrap founders. You know, we could get you like 5X of your MRR. It's not 2 million bucks, right? It's only, what is that? You know, call it 150,000 bucks, but you can come back and take more capital every like 30, 45 days. Would you ever look at non dilutive options? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, and and it, they are a lot more founder friendly uh, because you still have control of the company. And in fact, I just signed up for that uh, just before the call. Oh, not oh for Founder Path. That's right. 
Oh, that's amazing. Well, I hope, let me just ping my team right now on Slack and say, give Vidya an amazing offer. She gave me a great <laughs> interview. Okay. We'll see what we can do for you. Thank you, Nathan. We tell founders all the time. We say, look, even if you don't take money from us, if you have an offer from us, you can use it as leverage with the VCs to try and get better terms from them. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. I am certainly rooting for you. Uh, and thanks so much for supporting the show and listening. How many episodes do you think you've listened to? I've listened to about uh, 25 episodes of yours, but I keep doing that every day. In fact, I just keep looking at your episodes because I think there's a lot to learn from founders bootstrapped in other ways. And it's just great learning when you know, scaling a SaaS business. When you open the app, your iTunes app, and you're looking at episodes to play, how do you decide which ones to click? What do you look for in the title? Um, so I usually search for um, a zero to one. And I saw your most re recent one with Missive yep. and how they scaled from zero to two. So that was really interesting for me. Um, the other is there's a thing which comes on YouTube, the notifications. So I usually look at that as well. I That's saw awesome. one with uh, yeah, the Typeform founder as well. So that was like 75 million ERR. So that was really exciting. That's awesome. Well, listen, I'm certainly rooting for you. Let's wrap up your video with the famous five. Number one, favorite business book. Um, I like Predictable Revenue by Adam Ross. That's a good one. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Yeah, so I follow. Um, so, so it's kind of hard to say. I, I, but off late, I've been following both Anjali Sooth as well as uh, G from Lemlist. I did a podcast with G with Lem, from Lemlist. So I, I think he's he's really done a lot to bootstrap and grow his company. He certainly has. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building Fitbots? Um, I would say. Um, HubSpot. We are on HubSpot. So I, I think it's really, uh, it's a good tool. And video number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Um, I try and get about six to seven hours. Okay. That's a good amount. And situation, married, single, kids? Married with kids. I have a 11 year old. Oh, amazing. One kid. And do you mind me asking how old you are? I'm 43. Amazing. Okay. Last question. Something you wish you knew when you were 20. I wish I'd learned uh, how to scale a SaaS business. I wish SaaS was known when I was 20. <laughs> and I wish I'd learned how to scale it back then. Guys, she cut her teeth in corporate, then went out on her own in 2018, launching FitBot. She started by getting officially certified as an OKR consultant. They've coached hundreds of companies on implementing OKRs and said, you know what? Now we're going to launch software to help people do this. They've done that. They now have 50 customers paying for the software on average 500 bucks a month. So $25,000 a month in revenue. That's more than 100% year over year. They were doing 13,000 a month a year ago. They've done this all fairly capital efficiently. They raised 250,000 bucks pre-seed back in 2020 at a $2 million valuation, looking now to raise a, a seed round, call it 2 million, willing to sell, call it 15 to 20% of business. We'll see what happens next. Maybe we can commence to use founder path and non-dilutive capital. But in the meantime, video, we're rooting for you. And thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you, Nathan. And it's a pleasure being here. Thank you very much. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.